Oh, it actually might be good. They couldn't hear me. You could hear me, but I had my microphone absolutely muted, as usual. <laughs> it's like it's either one thing or another. Either I don't like transition smoothly or I forget to unmute myself on the streaming program. So good job, me. Round of applause yeah. here. Yes. Hey, good job. We, we got it working. Yeah, we eventually. got it. We got it eventually. Yeah, we're, we're winging this. We're winging this. Um, so... To start things off, I do want to go ahead and say, you know, welcome to, and I'm Thank going you. to confirm the way to say it. People are contesting if it's legend, which is the way that I say it, or if it's legan, that's your, you know, you got multiple legs. Which one is it? Legan. Hard like, G. Hard G. Hard G. Okay. So it is mm. Legan. Rasani is right. I will have to let them know later. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I always wondered, and it's better to know than to not, and it's more funny honestly to think of multiple legs moving around because you're legging that that just it's hilarious in my head i mean it, it's basically two vi two uh, syllables that i picked at random way back when oh really <laughs> yep nice um well yeah so we got we've got legging here and we are going to be talking <clears throat> archivist i don't know that we'll have to go into too much about spines specifically unless you end up having anything about it um, but definitely try to focus on your guild and let you have an opportunity to let them shine um, and give everyone a little bit insight into how it goes. Yeah, uh, we'll see where the conversation goes uh, since the guild is part of Spines Reach and we are uh, helping out with some of our of, uh, Spines Reach's uh, research projects like the, uh, the cloning project, um, how we are going to save the world from uh, Durin. Uh, how we are going to fix the Dara and so on. <laughs> Save the world from Durant. There's no saving the world. <sighs> from I mean, we're all waiting for the Shadowbound Plague 2.0. I missed the first one, but I'll be, I will be there for the second wave. It'll be fantastic. It'll be oh, phenomenal. Yeah. It'll be just like, the, the it will be murder and slaughter and a lot of just squinty eyes everywhere whenever it happens. Yeah. Everyone's a suspect. Everyone's sus, as my son says. <laughs> anyway. All right. So uh, I guess I'll start with uh, my first impression of the guild, uh, since that uh, kind of in informs and contextualizes a lot of the projects that I'm working on now uh -huh. and where I want to take the guild in the future. Perfect. Uh, so basically, I played Akea uh, about 20 years ago on and off, never really got into it as much. Um, I did get more into Empyrean, played that for a few years, uh, oh, then I had to take a 12-year break because that is how long I needed to mellow out. Uh, COVID-19 happened, uh, I got a sudden injection of, of nostalgia, um, so I decided to give IRE uh, another chance. Mm -hmm. And um, Atolia, even back then, always had a reputation uh, as the roleplay mud. Uh, I didn't really want to try Ikea again because I thought it might be too big. Um, yeah. Empyrean had just disappeared off top mud sites and I wouldn't have gone back anyway. So I decided to check out Etolia. Uh, I played a little bit of on release when it was just a carbon copy of Ikea. Um, I have very, very vague mem memories of uh, trying it out a few more times over the years, but never really got serious about it. So uh, when I started playing, I had this very clear concept of Legan as uh, an enchanter and as a craftsman because um, I had more money to be irresponsible with, and <laughs> I now had the opportunity to engage with uh, IRE IR mechanics that I had not been able to enjoy in the past. So I wanted to do enchantment, I wanted to do crafting, maybe run a store, and now I have a market stall that is horrifically neglected. <laughs> But the, the intention was there. I had a character concept. So I went on the uh, Atolia website to mm -hmm. kind of see what was happening, how the game had changed. Um, eventually, I figured out that uh, enchantment was no longer a guild skill. It was a mercantile skill that anyone could pick up, and that freed up more options for me. Yeah. So uh, I looked at the classes. I looked at the cities. I kind of figured out uh, the shadow versus spirit thing. Um, I didn't really understand what it was what it was about, but I understood that shadow was a much cooler word, <laughs> and that Spines Reach was the city of nerds. 
<laughs> I mean, so far, this is this is sounding like I, I completely relate to how you're writing this <laughs> out. So we're, we're on the same page here. Continue, please. Yeah. <laughs> so in basically any video game where I have a mage or a wizard class option, I'm going to try that first. So when I made a character, I went for Spine's Breach over Bloodlock. Good plan. Yeah, and then I have the choice between the Archivists and the Psyomancers. And systems were in there, but they're not wizards, so, you know, who cares? <laughs> yes. And because I had this very uh, specific concept of Legan as an enchanter and as a craftsman, like someone who made things, uh, the uh, archiv Archivists were a very natural fit for that, because mm -hmm. they're all about collecting items and relics and doing spooky stuff with them. <laughs> So yeah. that's really what sent my decision to join the guild. And if I had not had that very strong concept, I am absolutely absolutely certain that I would have gone Psyomancer 10 times out of 10. But I feel like you probably would have been a little bit more bored, possibly. Yeah, possibly. But it's, it's really kind of one of the major issues that I'm kind of struggling with now and that I'm trying to fix uh, as the guildmaster. Mm -hmm. Which is that the archivists are in a really weird spot, lore-wise. Like the Psyomancers, uh, they are directly connected into the Shadow. Like if you want the, the full-on Shadow Tether experience, you go Psyomancer, you are directly plugged into it. Uh, you walk around with black holes. Yeah. Like it... You're full-on Shadow as Shadow gets. Yeah. The, the citizen don't quite have that, but they do have their duty as the wardens of Spines Reach, you know, making sure that the shadow bound don't spread. And if they do spread, you know, they get a dirk to the back of the head. Yep. Our caravists don't really have that. Uh, we use the shadow a little bit uh, with bio essence, but it's not a really prominent thing. Um, so one of the things I've really been trying to figure out is looking for ways to carve out a niche uh, for the archivists in, in the Shadow Tether to explain like why we are attached to the Shadow beyond the fact that we have no morals and we will uh, experiment with uh, anything and, and everything. Yeah. Like there's uh, this concept in uh, marketing, I think it's called, um, i drawing blank. Uh, I didn't end up in the, enough about marketing terms, so I cannot help you here. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's, it's the idea that if you give someone uh, too many choices, uh, I think it's decision overload. Where yeah. You give someone too many choices, and the uh, decisions, uh, the, the all the options are too similar, then you you won't be able, be able to make a decision. Yes. The archivists are kind of in that spot because our job is to do research on everything. Uh, whether that's the, the shadow, enchantment, uh, nature, art, whatever else, uh, anything about anything falls under the archivist purview. And uh, one of the things I'm, I'm really trying to push is to give us a, a little bit more direction within that. Yeah. So fundamentally, the guild is about uh, freedom, uh, enlightenment, and progress. Uh, the city of Spine Reach is also about freedom, enlightenment, and progress. So on a very surface level, anything that you can do in the uh, archivists, you could also do as a citizen or a Psyomancer. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like we can't be the Shadow Mage Guild. Like That's the Psyomancers. We are never going to be able to compete with them against that. They own it. Uh, it is their expertise. We're not going to be a Spy Guild either, because that is the citizen wheelhouse. Yep. So the direction I'm trying to take uh, that I'm very, very subtly uh, angling towards uh, is more of a, an, an anti-spirit bent. Okay. So we don't necessarily go into the shadow for power or knowledge. Our thing is really that we live in a world and it's fine. Mm -hmm. but it's not really as good as it could be. It could be made better, but it's stuck with the loss of the spirit element. And really, isn't really the spirit element kind of the, of the kind of the root of all our problems? Like its job is to balance out the shadow, but it's not really doing a very good job of it because if it could do that, 
then Daryl would be fine. Mm. So maybe instead of you know following the the, the the physical laws of the spirit element, maybe we should just um, kind of get rid of it or <laughs> subvert it or take control of it, and then we can do like crazy uh, imaginative shit and really have fun and see how far reality can go. Okay. But have you considered that spirits in everything? So you would have to yeah. do a lot of work to get rid of it. I mean, it's it's the same issue with getting rid of Shadow, which is why, yeah. you know, Duran's like, well, we can't get rid of it. We can slow it down, but we can't get rid of it. But to get rid of it entirely, that is an interesting concept. Yeah. I mean, it is a work in progress. Uh, it is something that I that I've only just uh, started working on. Mm -hmm. um, I have some org recs that kind of were related to it, but they haven't been approved yet, so that's kind of uh, in the sidelines. Uh, I made it a little bit more exp explicit uh, now when uh, Durin attacks Durion, and was like, uh, "Okay, Durin, Durin is being a problem. Uh, Dendara is being a problem." we need to fix it like they're not going to during is not going to solve uh, the problems with sejita they don't know how they don't have the skills they don't have the knowledge we are going to have to do this ourselves we are going to prove that the dendara and the spirit element uh, are obsolete and we are going to replace them with number right, we have numerology numerology can do uh, anything it can fuck with reality uh, it can balance the elements no problem. So we, I, I'm trying to use that to kind of push uh, the uh, the anti-spirit agenda, essentially. Okay. okay. And I, I could see, it's like I, to give you, you some context, because I don't no. know how much you know about like my player background. Very little. Okay. I, and you'll probably have seen it from postings in the guild, I used to play Agathassel for... Mm -hmm. A good while. So many years, two, three years backwards, leading the archivist. So what I'm, you know, I'm listening and I'm like, okay, I can kind of see this. I, I had the same issues you were having, trying to figure out yeah. a direction for the guild. Didn't have a ton of help trying to figure that out. It kind of, I had a big burst of people and then it fizzled and kind of died. Yeah. So I get what you're you're going through. And these are definitely some some unique concepts. It would be good to see something like this where it's a little bit more hardcore. That's kind of what I I agree with Ictinus. I would love to see more oh, hardcore lore organizations. Like you've got a very specific goal, you know, that's going to make you drive for it really, really hard. And I think the idea of trying to completely liberate the world from spirit although realistically probably not a thing oh that's totally fine yeah but it's it's an interesting one it's different it's not something the other organizations are doing like psyomancers yeah they're focused on their psyo and then Sizen are just you know sneaky bastards trying to make sure that no one gets shadow um shadow plagued but to completely get rid of spirit entirely and find an alternative would definitely allow for a lot of new ven venues of uh, yeah. things to explore there. Oh, yeah, like a large part of the reason why I picked it is that, to my knowledge, there is uh, no other organization organization that has that stance. Like, Psyomancers are just about using the shadow. Yeah. Sisson are just about warning the shadow. I think the closest org uh, that is really uh, kind of anti-spirit would be um, uh, Yvonne's Order. Because they're anti life and pro on death, and even then, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of questionable because technically, with being anti life, you're anti most everything. <laughs> it's not even just spirit, because spirit is not the only thing required for life. You have to have all of the elements Fire, for water. For, and yeah, else. you have to have all that shit, including earth and everything, in order to live. Um, so you're right. There's not really an organization that is anti-spirit like full-on like hey we're sick of your shit spirit you gotta go we can replace you like you're saying i don't i don't remember enough about numerology to like say the balancing of elements and stuff but if if there's current lore to it then if that's the option that actually would be definitely a nice little hook to say hey if you want to destroy the world of spirit come here we can do that yeah. together yeah i mean it, it is uh 
kind of a challenge to map out because uh, I know that numerology has a lot of lore to it, mm -hmm. but I was not there for any of it. Uh, I've absorbed some of it from uh, uh, players and characters who were around and from the Hell Files and from the uh, the uh, the Guild's books. But that's another issue which I'm trying to uh, deal with is that uh, numerology has a lot of uh, lore attached to it, but it's not really contemporary. Like it, It's not immediately relevant to the current uh, spirit versus shadow war or to the war against the Albedi gods. Yeah, you're completely right there because yeah. it's it's one of those holdovers from the Kabbalists. I mean, it's de yeah. it definitely has updates compared to the Kabbalists, but <laughs> the general concept is very much still leaning into the Kabbalists. And it, it is a little bit, you know, in between the shadow spirit, but it's not enough. It's not really been updated in a very, mm. very long time. If we could get updates, that would be phenomenal. Oh, I do have plans for that. Good. <laughs> So yeah, that, that that was kind of uh, uh, just going over where I'm coming from and the uh, guild's uh, general direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so that thought process really started uh, shortly after I took over as guild master. Um, Sidon uh, had uh, thought about uh, changing our uh, our advancement system because um, it, it was very really cluttered and yeah. uh, messy, especially at the higher stages. Mm -hmm. So he recommended that I uh, overhaul it. So I, I talked with the docents who are essentially our uh, our, our uh, informal mentors, uh, secretaries, and eventually what I landed on was a system that is built on the values of the guild. So freedom, enlightenment, progress. Mm -hmm. So when you come in as an iconoclast, you are uh, an outsider, an outcast. Uh, you are Herbert West studying medicine at Miskatonic University and uh, bring people back to life in questionable ways and doing horrific science experiments. Uh, you are the uh, mad prophet who was exiled from their hometown. And now you have learned uh, freedom. You are no longer bound by morality, by social norms, by expectations, uh, by physical chains. And more importantly, you are no longer bound by your biases and your preconceptions. It's really about uh, liberating your mind and learning how to embrace all the possibilities that the Archivium offers to you and how you can learn and what you can research. Second step to that is based on the idea of uh, enlightenment. So uh, after the uh, initial interviews where you do your, your basic stuff, uh, yeah. you get, get some clothes, get some pills, uh, get a description, learn about the basics of the, of the guild, go through the interview, then you are a Scrivener. Okay. And uh, the point of the Scrivener rank is to encourage people to look at aspects of Aetolia as metaphors for numer numerology, bioessence, or geometrics. Okay. So when there's a major event going on and we get a lot of uh, lore dumps, then it's really, really easy to be an, arc, uh, an archivist. Yes, we're getting all the good stuff, we're exploring new things, we're learning new aspects about the game and the settings, but that's not something that happens all the time. Uh, so one of my goals and one of the things that I really want to enable uh, is to give people something to do even when there isn't a major event going on. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've come to think about that uh, in terms of uh, uh, almost metaphysical conspiracy theories, <laughs> where what you say doesn't need to be true. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be symbolic, mm -hmm. and it just mean, needs, needs to be uh, interpreted in an interesting way. So that, it's, so that it sounds plausible based on uh, what we do know and based on how numerology and geometrics and biosense work. Right. Uh, so like when you were talking about uh, the novice experience, and you were talking about someone who wanted to uh, have visited the shadow plane, and that was impossible. Even if it is impossible, uh, in the archivist, if you wanted to run it uh, almost like an alien abduction, uh, where you're kind of like playing Fox Mulder, and you come up and you say, hey, when I was uh, 15 years old, my, order, my uh, younger sister was kidnapped by a being from the shadow plane. Mm -hmm. And even if everyone says, like, that's not how it works, but if you describe the event and this perfect thing that happens, and people will say, okay, that probably didn't happen, 
Well, we can understand why you would think that a shadow demon kidnapped your sister. Right. So a Scrivener rank basically is just a list of things that you can do. Uh, you can do PK related activities, like you can sect, uh, create crafting designs. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, fame quests in there. Uh, let me check the list. <laughs> Oh, you're you're fine too. I, this is sounding similar, like thematically, to what I ended up doing with the Centauri. But it, mine's mm. I ended up doing something a little bit more free flowing, where you've got just a list of tasks. It's, I think it was something the essential yeah. have done, and you just get to pick and choose. Um, got some basic essentials you have to do, but otherwise you kind of choose your own adventure kind of of studies. Um, mm. So it's, it's something you know, not exactly the same, but similar, where you get that. That freedom which i think really helps players be able yeah. to not only just dive into the lore of the org but develop their own lore for themselves their own role play mm. within the org so they can kind of spread their wings a little bit yeah so it's basically stuff like uh, join the uh Cerosian geological society mm -hmm. uh submit designs to the guild shop learn uh mitrine or tav uh what else have we got uh do a uh, historical report on any uh, village or an event, uh, map out a village or settlement, master Mander's tower, obtain the Black Rose, mm -hmm. uh, join the Astop cult, uh, raid the vaults, uh, uh, complete the quest, uh, a cage of flesh. So uh, all this stuff that uh, was actually part of the previous progression plan, uh, except it was kind of scattered across for different paths yeah and some of them were more complicated or more loaded than others so i just took most of the interesting stuff dumped it in there now you pick three of them and the three you pick uh you explain how they can be looked at as a metaphor for some aspect of numerology or uh, geometrics or bioessence so you can do mandra's tower and then explain why you think uh, the puzzles of the tower represent the number seven in numerology. Okay, I can see that. Or you can do the cage of flesh, and then you can explain how you know the elemental brand and learning an elemental tongue and binding an elemental for to you uh, is representative of uh, a uh, a mutagen infection. Ooh, I like that one because technically. That is kind of what it's doing when you get yeah. the brand. It, it is infecting you, and you can't see me doing air quotes, but I'm doing air quotes over here, yeah. infecting you with their their element so that you can be able to speak it and all these other things. So I could see that relating to mutagen. would be cool if there was some, if there were some other extra bits of, of mutagen rather than it just being for PK. Um, mm. But that's a, that's a whole other topic. That's, that's not this. Mm. Good, right? uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm also giving a novice a tour of the Archivium, so it's, I'm a little bit distracted, but it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, we're doing this live! It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, the idea is to encourage people to look at this really deep, uh, symbolic uh, interpretation of the world in the most mundane uh, activities. I like it. Like, uh, it's a bit like uh, the the, the tarot or uh, Yi Ching divination, where the facts aren't necessarily important. It's about uh, your interpretation of the facts mm -hmm. and why you think this symbolism is important. Right. And by encouraging that kind of a perspective uh, and that way of looking at, at things and making shit up, basically, uh, I, I want to encourage people to do the weird science thing, even when there isn't a major event going on. I think that's important, honestly. Yeah. Like, I think that's something that, and we, we kind of discussed this at the other group on Sunday when we were talking about stagnancy mm. in orgs, is that you have to have options of things for people to keep doing, even if it's not, you know, even if it feels like it would be something kind of tedious or maybe something that's not the, you know, big or important like an event would be it's just yeah. something to keep the story going and make it feel like the game is still fairly alive 
Yeah, and I, I think a lot of uh, games and settings that uh, have a paranormal aspect, similar to the uh, uh, archivist, really benefit from taking stuff that looks completely mundane and making it weird. Yeah. Uh, for an example, as an example, for people who have played it, uh, there is a video game called Control, which is about a building that contains a lot of weird and dangerous objects. Uh, one of them is just a teleporting rubber duck. <laughs> and another one is a, an old fridge from the 1960s. And as long as someone is looking at it, it's perfectly happy. But if it isn't being looked at, it kills something. And it's just an ordinary looking fridge. Looks totally normal, totally ordinary, but it is this horrifying paranormal monstrosity. Nice. And I really like uh, getting at that aspect of uh, m simple, ordinary things that are actually extremely dangerous or extremely weird or unusual. Yes. That is something I always wanted to try to do with the archivist with the, the vault mm. that's there is I wanted to try to get just some really normal looking items that end up having some really crazy abilities. Just, you know, yes. kind of for shits and giggles more than <laughs> anything else. Cause then you could go in there and maybe you could run some experiments on it or you could go put it on and play with it. You could, you know, in a controlled setting yeah. obviously, but then you're just, you're seeing the effects of what that does to you, to the world, but it is the most random shit. That is fun to me, but I'm also a little bit odd. Mm. I mean, it, it really plays into the uh, the horror aspect, right? Right. Like you, you don't expect something that looks completely innocent to be this horrifying uh, paranormal monstrosity from another plane. Right. But that's how they get you. Yeah. They sneak in when you're not looking into the thing that you want to, you know, have the most. And then, boom, they're murdering you. Yep. So that's uh, the... Uh, Kind of the, the, the second tier of uh, advancement. Uh, for now, uh, for now, our advancement works with uh, guild ranks. So once you do the uh, first iconoclast thing, uh, you get class. Um, I am thinking of changing it to a, a, a position system, uh, just because tying it to rank makes it a bit awkward to guild favorite people sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of something I'm putting off until we get our uh, our mirror class, mm -hmm. because. I changed all the guild ranks, and it took forever to come up with good names, so I don't <laughs> want to do it again. No. No. I understand. Yeah. And the, uh, the next tier is uh, what uh, uh, ended up being called the lore right tier. So when you are in a code class, you are given freedom. When you are a Scrivener, you are taught to find uh, enlighten enlightenment uh, in the most uh, mundane or unexpected places. And the lower right rank is about progress. So you need to take your knowledge and you need to do something with it. Uh, okay. Uh, give me a second to pull up the examples. You're fine. No one has done this yet, but I am looking forward to it. So it, it's kind of separated uh, into different tasks uh, you basically pick one and it has to be presented as a as what we call a tier four research project okay so it is it is a lot of fake work like you need to do some background research you need an introduction you need to come up with methods and the idea is that you produce something so uh, it could be like charm crafting, where you make a bunch of uh, superstitious symbols for others to wear. Uh, it could be you joining the uh, city government of uh, Spines Reacher Bloodlock, becoming an aide, and then doing a city project. Uh, it can be giving lessons to people. Uh, uh, it can just be uh, a world event that came up and in an emergency. Uh, you decide to do research on this project, and I decide it is good enough, and you get promoted. Uh, it could be a general research project where you coordinate with uh, other junior guild members to do uh, a big research thing made, out, made up of uh, smaller research things. There's a group combat task. There's a uh, single combat task, uh, adding items to the Archivium, or... Uh, kind of mentoring unofficially a guild member until they are promoted to lower right themselves. Okay. So I like the the kind of group projects and everything. Some of the other stuff sounds like, I mean, this is not like trying to say 
anything particular. No, it's it's not like kind of your, right, your standards at that level where you're trying to get them to, you know, interact with other players and you're trying yes. to. Yes. And that's that's always a big thing. Like, I don't think there's near enough interaction between guild players. Like, we see it in plenty with cities, but guilds, oh, there's not there's not as much in any. Yeah, in like, the guilds. Yeah, so like it, it, my main priorities for the, the my current plans, uh, the overarching project is to situate the archivists within the Shadow Tether, uh, pushing more towards an, an anti spirit bent uh, mm -hmm. is part of that. And another aspect that I really want to develop is uh, the archivists as teachers and advisors. Yeah. So they, uh, encouraging contact with other guilds, uh, encouraging people to go out to go out and uh, you know show the unenlightened what they should be doing. Yes, yes. That was oh, that was one my big only hook that I managed to figure out before. I ended up retiring my character was like, mm. okay, let's make us the educators. That's what we are. We are the yes. most knowledgeable people in the world. We are smart. We're going to teach everyone that's stupid and ignorant and doesn't actually know the reality of things. Um, and knowledge is freedom and, and all of that sort of thing. So yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Like that's another thing that the Sire Masters don't really do as much. Like you're all about right. power. The archives of all are all about acquiring knowledge. Mm -hmm. Much of that knowledge is simply too dangerous to share with others, but some of them can be shared. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the org regs that uh, I have waiting in the queue somewhere, and you know, I don't want to set any uh, uh, unreasonable expectations for anyone. Right. Uh, I'm whatever the pools are doing. I am one hundred percent behind it. Uh, However long this takes, it's totally reasonable as far as, I, as I'm concerned. You know, we just got the Bard class. Uh, we've got a, a small events going on in Druin, uh, Bloodlock, and uh, Spines Reach. Mm -hmm. People are busy, so I don't know how long this will take, and that's totally fine. Yeah. Anyway, with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, one of the orders that I have requested uh, was some uh, guild emotes to encourage people to, you know, give lectures about things or share enlightenment of numerology and geometrics or uh, examine a location in a really manic way. And technically, you don't really need those things. Uh, like, you can do custom emotes, you can send custom poses, but I like having them because they're a tool that uh, people can use and that they know they can use. Right. So my goal is to really prime people to kind of do those things uh, and give out lectures and know that this is uh, something that is supported mechanically. And that since they have those tools, they should try to use them. I kind of like that concept because mm. that's, um, it's different than having an NPC that you could set up and get them to teach the lessons, which there is in case you, you probably, I don't know if you'd be aware of it or not. There's actually an NPC in the old Kabbalist guild hall that's still in Spines Reach that mm teaches lessons like you can actually go to him and ask him about a couple of different courses and he'll teach them and at one point unless it it probably is linked to the um sg the stormcaller thing to that clan but you could actually go in there and you could tell that npc what you want to do for the classes you could actually still set him up to teach but that still mm -hmm. makes it so that npc is just oh does it still work that's what i thought uh, yeah the lectures are pretty interesting akari utera um mm -hmm. Riotega actually took me in there and, and showed me it back when I was an archivist. Um, so you may want to check this out, you know, giving you some, yeah, some meta knowledge, meta knowledge here. But the the dude, if you could, if it, you could test it out, see if you could still set up lectures on it. If you can't, it may be worth an org rec and talking to um, yeah. Eleanor and uh, Akari Ar Yotera. I, I might be butchering saying that, um, and seeing if you could even use that as well as the, the emotes to have something to just, you know, mm. lecture people. Yeah. Well, another thing uh, that, that I, I have requested and that has neither been, that has not been approved or rejected yet uh, is kind of an, an item that uh, archivists could uh, get uh, from the Gildo somehow and then use it to uh, illustrate their lessons on BioSS numerology and uh, geometrics. And then later on, I can kind of get it upgraded for whatever our mirror is. That would be a good, so, a good way to do it too. That might even be better than just the emotes alone because yeah. it could kind of work like the chakrasal robes, which would allow mm. you to basically do um, 
what do you call them? I can't think of what you, the room emotes, like not an emote yeah. emote, but you can like basically, the, an uh, room echoes. huh? Uh, the room echoes. Yeah. The room echoes. Yeah. So you could do an actual, you know, room echo that, you know, is illusiony, yep. but it doesn't have the lines for illusion. And it's, you know, just stands out yeah. a little bit better than the emotes. So that would, that'd be pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah. My uh, inspiration for that was the compendium tome. Mm -hmm. uh, we got for the year 500. So I'm hoping uh, it goes through. I'm hoping for you too. This can be some, yeah. some really useful things. Definitely. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I have Word documents full of ideas that I want to uh, add <laughs> to the guild hall. Uh, but, you know, they cost credits and gold. Uh, and also, I don't want the clutter of the place. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you'll end I up mean... like the Centauri guild hall where we've got like. <laughs> 30 rooms or something from one of the guild masters that just kept adding rooms on and now i tried to go to the admin and be like can i just delete rooms please and they're like no you can't delete rooms sorry i'm like damn it so you don't want to be that that guild master but having yeah. a lot of ideas is not a bad thing that's actually really good and hopefully this you know podcast will help kind of plug people into the fact that you're you're thinking of things and trying to yeah. figure out things so that they could be like hey let me come Come check it out and and help. That's mm. what you need. You need help, yeah, not yeah. just you alone. Oh yeah, and uh, the the archivist secretaries uh, Aline and Calrus have been extremely helpful. Oh, is Aline um, still in the guild? Okay, I wasn't oh, sure yeah. since she's Bloodlock. I did not remember if she had uh, switched yeah, I mean, or not. Two of my three secretaries are from Bloodlock. <laughs> of course. Of course, but yeah, I mean, th th there is a method for my man for my madness when I add things to the the guild hall. So. Uh, I look for things that one uh, give people something to do. Mm -hmm. We're in the, the guild hall. Um, another example that I've requested and that hasn't been, not been approved yet is the thing that I'm going to do to Durin to punish them for their hubris. Oh boy, here it comes. You're you're not going to love it, but Nipsey will. Okay. Uh, and yeah, like I, I want to give people things that uh, they they can go to the guild hall for. Uh, to make it more of a sociable area, because people don't really use it as much. Uh, I want to, I want to add things that will serve uh, as a point of, of discussion for interactions. Mm -hmm. So if you want to role play with someone, uh, someone else in the guild, you can just you know ask them if they're free. Then you can go to one of the laboratories and you can mess around with something. And uh, ideally, it won't just be you know emoting at people and getting a known outcome that's totally fine uh if you want to do character development or something yeah but you know part of the, the playing of the scientist role is uh, giving people uh, opportunities to interact with things and have a, an element of uh, novelty or surprise to it Sorry, I got distracted by Elliot Dunn in chat where he said, what, you mean your guild halls aren't just pointless areas for hiding and returning? In, hiding into Return to Haven. That was really weirdly, weirdly worded there, but I get what you were trying to say. So, I mean, my guild hall is open, unlike a lot, like all of the Spines Reach ones. So I can't, I, I mean, I guess I technically could, but yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not specifically for that. The Archivist Guild Hall is very good for that, though. Um, yeah, and you know... And also, I want uh, any item added, added to the guild hall to serve uh, kind of a, as a plot hook for people who might like their character but might not know what they want to do with them. Mm -hmm. So you just pick a random laboratory, uh, poke at an item, and that will give you something uh, that will hopefully inspire you to uh, work on your character's direction or try, try something new. That'd be cool. Um... And you, that's on top of kind of some of your other general things you have. Like you have the very, I still don't know how it works. I don't know what the RNG on, is on it, but where you put your hand on the thing and you figure out what your uh, like attunement yeah. number, your n number is. I still don't understand how it RNGs that bad boy. Yeah, the seven hand diagram. Uh, yeah. As far as I can tell, it never changes. So I I've had that... I've had people had different ones, so really? I'm wondering if it's something off a stat pack. I don't know, but that might be an org rec of its own as to <laughs> fix the RNG <laughs> on that because it's been forever since I've seen anyone not get what ye. I think it's ye is the big one. Yi is uh, seems uh, to be what everyone was getting for a while there. I mean, I've I, I've never seen ye, and I have given the tour quite a few times. 
Oh, it's not Hiking. you. Hmm. Uh, it's one. Of, it's one of the big numbers. Is it Le, Legat's best? Yes, yeah, so Legat is is best number. Uh, I can't remember yeah, which one it was. I, I haven't. I obviously I haven't been there in two years, so I haven't played with that thing. But we, we keep a getting, record of all of them. Yeah, uh, because we are nerds that way. Of and course. It, just eyeballing it, it looks like uh, 13, 11, and 5 are the, are the biggest ones. Uh, Juries of 5 seems to be the uh, the most common That's one. That's what I was about to say. And that was the one I was thinking of. Not Yi, but 5. Yeah, Jurisa. I think that was, yeah, that was one where I did, they walk through the tour like you're doing and had the, the person touch it. And I think I had at least five people in a row that got the same thing. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, this I'm... is this is not right. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of life's great mysteries. Uh, I have re reincarnated and tried it with uh, different stack packs. So, and I always have the same number. So, if it does change, um, I assume that it's stack pack dependent maybe on the first try. Or maybe it's just part of the RNG. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, like I, it I remains, know. like it, it's probably one of those progs where it takes and it records it afterwards. So, no yeah. matter how many times you touch it, you're always going to get the same number. I just don't know how it does the RNG. It seems like it's really borked somewhere in there. But cool, but but borked if everyone's getting the same damn number. Yeah. I mean, I have gotten some variety with it, so. Oh, know. that's good at least. Maybe maybe it changed at some point. Maybe. Um, but yeah, like, that's some of your other, you know, your other flair. You've got the tattoos. you got some of these other things. But yeah. as far as, like, just for general RP, I love the idea of just a lab. You go in there, you touch some shit, and random shit happens, and you don't know what the outcome is until yeah. it happens. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, another ORREC uh, that has been approved, uh, payment has been confirmed, uh, is what we have called the uh, Simulacrum of the Spheres. So... Uh, back when I became GM, I, I had this idea of a way for, for people to meditate uh, and kind of touch the realm of numerology more directly, or at least look at the surface. Uh, Kelras and Yazmat got in touch with me because they had a similar idea, so, we, so I kind of merged the two together and we worked on it. Uh, and now we are waiting on uh, this uh, basic numerological altar that when people use it, uh, if it works, will just project them into an, another room where they will get visions of uh, items or uh, events that are metaphors for one of the numbers. Ooh. So you can kind of go in there, uh, get a random vision, and then you can uh, write a report on it for your research uh, or just kind of look for ways to integrate that uh, into your character roleplay. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. You're kind of giving me, I mean, I'm not going to steal ideas because that's just, oh, go that's, ahead. I'm, I'm not that person, but it, I have had ideas of how I might do something for like actually glimpsing into planes for the uh, yeah. Centauri, things like that. Right now we're just doing a general checking in kind of proc. It doesn't give any visions, but that would be really cool. That would add depth. And then, yeah, you could do like you're saying, where you could have the the player write a report or kind of summarize their interpretation of what they are seeing. I like it. Yeah. Nope. Keep it uh, open to uh, interpretation. You know, making clear that everyone knows that's not a definitive statement. So you can kind of push the boundaries uh, uh, a bit of what would normally break uh, a totally lore. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's really about uh, flexibility and uh, giving people options for things that they may want to do or things that maybe that they may want to try out if, they bo if they're bored and they want to kind of change their character's direction or something. I like it. Well, what other kinds of org regs have you? I know that we can't obviously make promises. I'm in the same spot. I've got a bunch that are sitting there and I I'm, I love what the admin are doing. So there's not, I'm not saying I'm in oh, yeah. or anything. It's nothing like that. It's just, you got them sitting there. You, you got the ideas. You're just waiting to see what might come from them. So I know, I, I know. And I, I, I don't want to spam the queue either. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I want to be very, very clear that all my interactions on org regs have, have been positive. Uh, whenever there have been issues, they have been entirely my fault. Uh, the, uh, the the similar kind of the spheres project, for example, uh, I wrote out a, a general proposal, uh, sent it in because I figured you know it'll take a week for it just to get back to me, and they're not going to be able to do all of it. So there's going to be some back and forth. And uh, the next day, uh, everything was okayed, and I got everything I asked for, and nothing was ready. <laughs> and it, it took. 
forever uh, for me to kind of get the project to a point where everything was complete. And because of that, I now have a very, very strict rule for myself that nothing gets requested unless I have at least uh, a first draft in a Word document. And ideally, if the entire package is uh, in the org rec, all ready to go. Yeah. But uh, other things I want to ask for. Um, Um, I, I kind of want to steal the death guy, the death dice game. So if oh, people, <laughs> so but what I originally, I originally wanted to do uh, was set up this system where people could go and kind of test their knowledge of numerology and geometrics and bioessence, and inevitably they would die. But the number of uh, experiments they successfully conducted before dying would be recorded. And then you can like have people uh, trying to surpass their own records or competing against each other to see uh, uh, who could last longer as a, as a social game. And that I, I ended up uh, kind of shelving that uh, because it was getting just too big. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. That could get out of hand very quickly. Yeah, so to, to streamline the process, uh, a lot of the lines felt really similar. And what I would like to do instead is just take the same concept, and they split it up into different items or uh, different locations, give them each a nice unique twist to them. And um, that would hopefully make it more interesting. Mm -hmm. I have not submitted any ord regs uh, on that yet, uh, but it is fairly high up on my to-do list. I like it. Hmm. How big is your list? Oh man. Do I want to know? I wonder if I, so, can, if I can actually even see. I wonder if I still have one. I'm pulling up my, <laughs> I moved it out of the screen so people can't see it that well. I've got my like work notes in here. I'm actually gonna go look and see if I've got notes anymore. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, I'm currently working on a request for a uh, kind of a divination skill based on numerology. I threw that in uh, 20 minutes before the last round of class leads ended just to see if it will work. And uh, Karak told me to try it as an org as an org rec instead, so I'm going to do yeah. that. Okay. Uh, aside from that, uh, kind of the three death games I mentioned earlier, uh, I want to add something to our dissection table so people can kind of bring in corpses and uh, have fun with them. And every now and then, like something weird happens during the dissection process. Uh, one thing. Uh, that I would like to mention mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, Archivium Bibliotheca, uh, Clan Help Bibliotheca. It is a uh, clan um, I opened up uh, a while ago, uh, shortly after the revelation. And uh, its original intention was basically to be, uh, as I understand it, the shadow version of the Vintel Glade clan. Like a place uh, where people who aren't ar archivists, but who want to consult the archivists can kind of join and ask questions. Uh, and it's open to everyone. And it was uh, going to be our main point of contact with Durin about the project to uh, save Dandara until uh, someone ruined everything forever for everyone. And we had a war instead. But mm, yeah. it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But, uh, yeah. So that clan, uh, it's open to everyone, uh, and my objective is to kind of integrate it uh, into the uh, teaching and education and advisory project. And I really encourage more uh, communication and role play between the archivists and the other orgs. I like it. Mm. And guys keep inspiring me of things that I could do differently. Mm. I, I still have some optimism uh, and uh, energy, not not much, but it, it, there's still some there. <laughs> you 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 find, you do eventually run out of it, like the optimism part. There's energy, but then you run out of the optimism. It's like I need to just take a break from ideas for a little bit. So when that yeah. time comes, don't feel bad when it comes. Just take a little breather, and then you start again, and the cycle is yeah. never ending. Yeah, I mean, my, my general style, since we are a very small guild and we're spread out across multiple time zones, uh, is that whenever a new project comes up, I'll make a news post about it mm -hmm. and say, you know, this is what I'm working on. So, like, I want to add more things to the Archivium so people have more tools and more equipment for their uh, their experiments. 
And if you're interested in participating in that or giving some suggestions, you know, just send me a message. Right. So like things that people can do on their own time and they, they, can, they can get in touch with me. And uh, we have um, Miss Vara as a guild crier. So if it's, if it's something really important, um, I'll set her to have a message for that. Mm -hmm. Remind people. And yeah. Let me let me look through some of my typical questions I try to ask about and see if there's anything that might help provide people some additional, you know, insight into your your organization, um, sure. into the archivist. So, what do you what kind of players do you feel fit well in your guild? Like, do you think it's mostly going to be those types of kind of like the sciency nerdy kind of role play? Or do you think there's there's room for a little bit of of everyone? Oh, th there's definitely room for everyone, uh, especially as I said, like I was, uh, everyone to encourage people to uh, find knowledge in all, in, all, in all sorts of areas. So if you want to do crafting, if you want to do peaking, if you want to do bashing, uh, if you want to uh, get involved with uh, city politics or something, in Spines Reach or Bloodlock, uh, we don't have any envoy slots left at the moment, but you can in Spines Reach. So basically, uh, anything you want to do, uh, and if you want to link it to any part of uh, help archivist roleplay, so if you want to uh, interpret it as a numerology thing, or if you want to um, kind of play like the uh, like a wandering uh, seer or fortune teller who gives people advice about their personal lives and about feng shui and all that, that sort of stuff. Uh, that is kind of the basic uh, archivist concept. Like that's what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that that uh, okay. I'll say it this way: if you if you're interested in engaging with uh, areas of uh, Atolia's lore that are, aren't necessarily as developed as others, like uh, the spirit element, for example. Uh, when I was playing, kind of, when I was playing the uh, anti spirit band, I was looking for uh, any events that might have that might have involved spirit running out of control or causing problems. And I couldn't find one. Uh, if you want to explore numerology, uh, if you want to uh, examine the, uh, areas or uh, races or basically anything mm -hmm. that doesn't always get the, the spotlight. Uh, I think the archivists are in a really good position to support uh, that kind of thing. Okay. I like that. Now, I have a question because I pulled up the help file and I, I noticed something that I've never considered as an archivist. I never really, I don't really think anyone dived into it too deeply, mm -hmm. but have you ever considered anything related to the crystalline void? I, I just like looked at the help file and it's like, Sneak, you know, did the thing amidst the chaos of the crystalline void. And I'm just, I don't think anything's ever really been gone into with that. And what it is. Uh, I always assumed it was just uh, an event that was happened it, at some point in the past. Was it just the, the event? So it was amidst the chaos, chaos of the crystalline void. Maybe it was then. Maybe because that's, it is showing in the fractal bloom. Yeah. So maybe that's all it was. Okay. Never mind then. Yeah. Ignore me. Yeah. I got curious. I anyway. mean, that, 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 that's another, that's one of the things that I'm having kind of trouble dealing with is that so many events uh, that are referenced and that are, are kind of important to the guild uh, happened while I wasn't playing. So I have very little context for why they're important. Well, I could try to provide yeah. that context for you sometime. Yeah. I may have taken sure. a break too. So there's a chance there could be, at least with the like first round Kabbalas, that I may not have as much information. Mm. But if you ever need some, I could definitely try. Yeah, I mean, uh, the events news posts and health files usually get me there most of the time. Um, it's just some of the, some of the, uh, the, the nuance is unfortunately lost. No. Well, that's... That's easy to happen in general, honestly. That, yeah. <laughs> it's like news posts are fantastic for a variety of reasons. They'll they'll catch you up on what the essentials mm. of what you need to know. But any of those those tiny things that happen and understanding how it applies to your org, you really need a person to help translate that for you. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And I mean, I, I, I could uh, look at the guild's old news posts. But there's so many. But I'm, uh, yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I, I did do that with the Centauri at one point just because I was determined to figure out how many guild masters we had had because there was a <laughs> project for it that a lolly never finished. I'm like, I'm bored. I'm going to finish this file. So I ended up reading and, and going through there and figuring out why we ended up moving from Ashton and saw all this other stuff. So it was, it was mildly useful, but my gosh, the most boring thing I did with my time. So I can't blame you. It can get yeah. boring. Yeah, it is. It is boring. And there's also the issue that you don't really know how much of it is still relevant t today. Right. Because the game changed a lot since it was just a carbon copy of Ikea. Yeah, like the the game is, they have tried to erase pretty much everything Ikea esque. Although, and this is if any of the the admin are are listening, there are rooms in Western Ithmia that still mention a zone from Ikea, and I love it. It's hilarious to me. It's talking about a village that's supposed to be there that's not. It's not there. Is, um, is it Terra? Huh? Is it Terra? I I don't think it calls it out by name, but I think so. Like when I went to go look up in Ikea um, help files, what it was. I, let me actually, I can go while we're talking, I can go walk and I can go find it real quick because it's literally, it's literally in the description what, what it was. So let me see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, I mean, if, if anything. Oh, Bag Wars uh, Cops. Bag Wars Cops. That's what it was. Okay. Anyway. Like, if anything happens at North of Trees, my fingers will still type North of Terra through sheer muscle memory. Yes, yes. No, I'm still in that same spot all the time. I'm like, it's, it's North of uh, Trees. Sorry. Yeah. North of Trees. It's not North of Thera, North of Trees. 20 years later. For real. We're old, and we're still doing the same shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. What other questions do I have here? that would be useful we've kind of gone over what some of your favorite things are um given the current lore kind of where it works in spines reach um and talking about you know what kind of players could fit so is there anything else you really wanted to kind of give people a picture of for your org or anything like that <sighs> I'm trying to think of something that's not just repeating what I already said. Uh, but yeah, like I, I would encourage people to check out the archivists uh, if they want to uh, engage with the lore a little bit more, or if they want to have more flexibility with the way they interpret the lore. You know, put a new spin on it. Uh, no one's going to contradict them. And even if someone does contradict them, uh, you know, you did the numbers, the numbers don't lie. It, it has to be true. Yep. 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 That's okay. Yep. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, really, I'm really pushing for ways for the uh, guild to just to, to distinguish itself uh, from just the basic research that Spines Reach does because it's Spines Reach and all the stuff that the shadow organizations do. And uh, I'm really excited for the current uh, conflict with Durin. Uh, regardless of the outcome, I think it's going to have some very uh, interesting opportunities for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, either, you know, taking control of uh, Spines Reach's rightful place as the Guardians of the Shadow, or wreaking uh, messy, messy vengeance on Durin because they destroyed us all. I mean, is there anything wrong with destroying everyone, really? No, I mean... You know, you, you can't make an omelet if you don't break a few eggs. That's exactly right. We're just breaking some eggs. That's all. Yeah. And, you know, and we're going to break the entire element of spirit. And we're going to remake nature into something superior. And then either Dendara will be obsolete or Dendara is going to evolve into an apex of life. And then it will invade Sajita back. Wait, what was that? <laughs> My brain fried for a hot second there. What? Well, okay, so uh, 
it, this is kind of talking about someone else's player, so I don't want to go into the uh, details, but uh, Legan had a conversation with someone, and in about five seconds, his perspective on the on the Dara changed from, we need to create a superior form of nature and render Dendara obsolete to, you know, what if we seize control of Dendara and evolve it to a greater uh, state of life and uh, inhuman biological uh, monstrosity? And then Dendara will be able to invade the Shadow Plane back instead of getting corrupted. Okay. Because why not? Because why not? That's kind of the same thing we've been running with of our ideas is like, why couldn't this happen? I mean, logically, it could. We even, you know, talked about just disconnecting Dendara from the from uh, the connection. It still should be technically connected if we do that. It might drift a little bit. <laughs> But hey, it stops it from getting shadow from our plane. We've, yeah, we've, we've I mean, had some fun radical ideas. ideas. Yeah, <laughs> radical ideas. This is this is what Ictenas wants. That's what he wants. Yeah, he yeah. wants he wants serious plans and serious, you know, hard line, drive people crazy, make people frustrated. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and I, I do want to emphasize that uh, yeah, Ictenas has been great in uh, all my interactions with him for org regs or press or. And anything else? Yes, Ictenis is is a busy boy, but a fantastic person. Oh yeah, he. I I, I want to say too much because it's because it's it's weird, and I'm not like Orbrex are just in a weird spot where they're out of character, but also in character, and they're also kind of privileged knowledge about what the admin are kind of doing a little bit because you can mm -hmm. kind of gauge their uh, their workload depending on how on how the queue goes, so it's really weird to talk about but yeah they, they are extremely busy and they are doing uh, really good uh, work yes i wholly yeah. wholly agree well um but I, I i will not forgive them if the archivists don't get shadow shaman i, I, I want it so bad <laughs> it does depend on where they, the the <sighs> are going but i mean yeah. it's not an impossible location thinking of different concepts of things for it to go um because yeah. our the last class went to bloodlock. bloodlock so technically then this one yeah. should theoretically go to spines reach but we we don't know crystal yeah. golems are incoming i swear if no, fingers you, crossed. uh crystal golems i can't i can't get behind i mean there's already crystal golems there is there are people that literally made them out of gems in yeah. the terror gem so it's not like it's not a thing yeah Okay. Well, uh, do you have any other takeaways that you want to kind of throw at people to consider for your, your, your organization or any, you know, fun things you want to, to inform people of? Uh, no, I think that's, uh, I, I talked for an hour and I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> you were, you were rolling. I mean, you're given a lot of fantastic details, so you, you did good. Oh, I've been thinking about I've been thinking about the plans for Gil a lot, uh, and it is something that I've been working for now well in, for a while, and I really would look forward to uh, how it works out. But yeah, like if you want to uh, try something new with lore, uh, and you want to uh, do really simple stuff in uh, an extremely weird or overcomplicated way, or if you want to try a, a hardcore character, uh, and you want to really Take some risks. Uh, go ahead, give, give the uh, give the archivist a shot. And uh, like my priority is really to give people uh, opportunities for role play. And that's whether that is with uh, guild projects uh, or with uh, whatever I end up stuffing into the guild hall. That's really my number one priority. Well, I think that for everyone listening if you you know want to get involved with anything that that leg in here has been talking about or you know realistically even just spines reach in general because i know since you you kind of mentioned it they're leaning into the potential of making it so they don't have to technically be living quote unquote you know they, yeah we are know. part of the cloning project Yep. And uh, Severn actually lost patience with us dragging our feet on that. So now we have a little NPC to help out and make sure that uh, 
you know, someone is, is kicking, kicking our asses and making us work. Yeah, so that's so good. Some progress on that. So that that could work with a, a whole bunch of things. So it's really cool there. And you've heard about all the other opportunities that he's you know been, been speaking to. Um, so there's there's a lot of potential and a lot of really unique pieces if you want to make a hardcore character and go that that route of anti shadow uh, anti spirit. About to say anti shadow yeah. anti spirit. Kill the spirit. Use numerology instead. I think it's fantastic, just yeah. personally. And you know, the, the plans are just getting started, so there are going to be a lot of opportunities to get involved uh, and really kind of push uh, the wagon and uh, decide on and help to decide on the general direction we're going to take with the uh, the details and stuff. Exactly. So, so that's the good thing about coming into a guild that's in that transition period that's a little bit mm. smaller is that if you are trying to just get your foot in and get familiar with the role play and then help drive where the organization is yeah. going to go is the perfect timing. So definitely yeah. should give these guys a try for a little while, at least just check them out yeah. and see what's going on. Yep. All right. Well, we have done our, you, we have done justice of an hour. You did fantastic, sir. So <laughs> thank you so much for, for oh, joining for having me. me. Yeah, absolutely. This was, this was good. Um, and we will go ahead and end there then. And yep. I don't think that I'm going to be doing, just for everyone else's um, knowledge, I don't think I'm going to end up doing shows this Saturday or this Sunday or on Tuesday just because of the 4th of July holiday. I know a lot of people are probably right. going to be doing things and having fun. So I'll make sure to post and let everyone know. But on, I just want to make sure to say, hey, have a good 4th of July weekend. Hope you all don't get too drunk and blow up yourselves with fireworks. Be safe out there with those fireworks. And uh, if there's anything, like I preach every show, that you would like to hear from from me or from other people, anyone you would like to come on or you would like to come on, just hit me up. Let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you two Sundays from now. So not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday. Yeah. And if you're Canadian like me, enjoy your Confederation, Confederation, Confederation Day all holiday. Uh, there you go. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.